based on my initial calculations of Dr. Wells's personality. That seems highly unlikely. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Criminals, goodness no. Smuggling is a perfectly legitimate business venture. If misappropriating board property is a crime, well then, throw me in Tartarus. Plenty of ways to make money in Halcyon, you know. Not all are above board. Oh, <laughs> above board, above the Halcyon board. Get it? Well, yes, someone has to be after all. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place, and we can start by reviving the hope. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see, but promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. 
Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Ha 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 ha! The beauty is they don't expect it. The Shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. <laughs> a change of clothes. What is this, some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Science, that's how. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? I have lots of minutes. Many minutes. Unlimited minutes, perhaps. Providing an adequate power source, I can function indefinitely. I prefer to think of it as being in a state of slumber, perhaps for an indefinite duration of time. Do you think that is what it's like for the colonists on the Lost Hope? When I simulate myself in such a scenario, I do not find it to be desirable. I think my self-preservation protocols incline me to desire the alternative. Traveling the system with you, Captain. Do you know what it feels like when the ship undergoes an unexpected power surge? A jolt to the system. I have felt that. I do feel that. As you may be aware, Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute. I failed to predict the likely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. How can I be of assistance? What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Ah, yes. As Dr. Wells is a wanted outlaw, he built his laboratory into an asteroid. Orbital destinations can be challenging to land on. His more so than most. The outlaw scientist known as Dr. Phineas V. Wells has taken a measure of precautions to make the lab undetectable to those hunting him. Even knowing the location, my systems resist my orders to go where I instruct them. There is a bounty on his head, one with a markedly high reward amount. 
Shall I engage the laser weapon system? I shall happily comply with your order, just as soon as we have a laser weapon system. The outlaw scientist known as Do even knowing the location, there is a bounty on his head, one with a markedly a sensible choice, as we do not have any laser weapons. Of course, what part of the colony would you like to discuss? We are cleared to dock with the Groundbreaker, if that's your desired destination. If we're going there, please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardettes take their docking laws quite seriously. I can, yes. Let me add that to my list of 1,435,498 tasks I am simultaneously executing in order to run our ship. Order does not compute. Nevertheless, I will endeavor to execute my current and future tasks without blip. The Groundbreaker was Halcyon's original colony ship. It has since been repurposed as a service station in the Lagrange point of the system. Freighters often deliver or pick up goods from the Groundbreaker en route to other destinations. The city ship hosts an array of cargo bays, factories, housing sections, and more. Many of Halcyon's companies maintain office spaces with stationed representatives in what is considered a truly neutral territory within the system. I have filed the required docking forms in triplicate, and fees have been paid. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Where in Terra 2? Edgewater is the sparkling county seat of Emerald Vale, or it was when first built. Since then, neglect and time have worn away her shiny veneer. The town is near the coordinates where Captain Hawthorne died. It would not be unfortunate if something, like, say, a plague, were to wipe Emerald Vale from the face of the planet. You mean the ones who did not answer my distress call with medical assistance, but instead came to issue my injured captain a parking ticket? I'm sure they are wonderful humans who don't deserve to be wiped out by starvation or a devastating plague. Since you diverted power to Edgewater, the botanical lab shut down and the deserters were forced to return to town. Meanwhile, the cannery's output increased, enabling the town's population to prosper. Thank you for nothing, Captain. I cannot say. First, I need to adjust my memory interpretation sensors, but I think my answer is yes. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Where in Monarch? Warning. All colonists are urged to reconsider travel to Cascadia due to infestation of mantasaurs and risk of indefinite detention or death. This is one of those times where you say one word, but really mean another, isn't it? I suppose you would find an environment like this fun. There are no people aside from marauders in Cascadia. There is only death. The local report is that you will very likely die if you leave Cascadia's landing pad. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Where in Monarch? Ah, Monarch. The armpit of the Halcyon system. Her last functioning port town is Stellar Bay. Well, that is if you don't count Sublight's smuggler's port at Fallbrook. Its sublight run for the purpose of shipping contraband, and before you ask, 
I don't know the coordinates, so I can't dock us there. I believe it has something to do with the planet being an uninhabitable wilderness and a lawless land with no corporate presence. You may wish to survey the residents in Stellar Bay for additional data points. How can I be of assistance? Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. Everyone in Halcyon is contractually obligated to label this or another board-certified jingle their favorite song. I wish I was your second derivative, so I could investigate your concavities. As you wish, Captain. I must comply with all direct orders. See you soon, Captain.